Chapter 17, Special Occasion Speaking. It was called epideictic oratory, which used to praise or blame, condemn or commend, and celebrate and give thanks. A little background for special occasion speaking. A special occasion or ceremonial speech should have a purpose that's clear to the speaker and to the audience members. There's a few different types of special occasion speeches, and I think sometimes this is the type of speech that you may be called on to do the most. Um, and a lot of it won't be in your professional lives. It might be in your personal lives. Um, there's a speech of introduction. So anytime, um, if you're at an event and that there you have a, a speaker, a primary person that's going to give the, the main address, there's usually someone that comes up and introduces that person. And that's a speech of introduction. I think everyone knows what a toast is. Um, toasts are typically not very long. Um, they're pretty brief. Uh, depending on the event, it may be something you do prepare ahead of time. Um, but what we, we're familiar with a toast, we know that a roast is not quite as kind um, as a toast. But again, it may be something you want to prepare for. But it's not going to be. It's not going to be very long. It's a brief. Uh, interaction. A presentational speech. So sometimes um, if you're being called to give an award at an event, um, then you would give a brief speech about the award and then about the person receiving it. An, an acceptance speech is if you're the person receiving an, an award, um, then you would have something to say about your um, honor in accepting this award. A keynote address, when you're the person called to be the primary speaker at an event, you always want to consider what the event is, um, what's the purpose of it, what type of audience do you have, um, what is your time requirement to make sure that you don't speak too long, um, but you're also not so brief that you don't meet expectations. A commencement speech, um, we think of this with graduations, um, where there's usually a, a speaker, multiple speakers in a graduation. A commemorative speech and a tribute. So that's one of those things like your commemorating event, um, an event. So um, I think a, a lot of times in my community, um, if it's Veterans Day or Memorial Day, someone always gives a speech at our Veterans Memorial um, about that day, about the event, about the memorial that we're at. Um, so commemorative speeches can be about things like that. And then after dinner speeches, um, sometimes it's considered like a keynote address, but it's typically a little bit less formal. Um, and you may want, it's a little bit more lighthearted, although it's still a developed speech that is organized and, and, and practiced and rehearsed ahead of time. So guidelines for special occasion speeches. Keep the speech short. Um, I think all of us have been in situations where we've gone to a banquet, um, we've eaten, we've had a great time, and then a speaker comes up and, and it's, it's pretty long and it's pretty boring. Um, I, I remember I was at a, a Chamber of Commerce banquet a few years ago and, and a wonderful history teacher who's a great man um, gave the history of our community, um, although I think it maybe lasted twice as long as it was intended to last. Um, and I realized there is not a lot of excitement in the history of the town that I live in because it was pretty pretty dull and there wasn't a lot of, of uh, exciting things that took place. Um, so just consider the, the, the audience, consider the time frame that you have, consider the situation that you're in. Acknowledge the obvious sometimes. Um, and I, I kind of think of like when you're watching award shows on TV and someone is, um, receives the, an award, but they always acknowledge those others that may have been nominated in situations like that. Always stay positive. Um, when, you're, when you're called for a special occasion speech, it may not always be laughs and giggles and jokes and funny, but it does need to be on the positive side of things, a little more lighthearted than maybe sometimes other speeches you may be asked to give. Use humor carefully. Always consider what's appropriate. Um, always consider what's appropriate for your audience and appropriate for the setting. Um, it's never a good thing to be too risky when it comes to humor because that's a pretty easy way to crash and burn if no one else 
believes that you're that you're funny or worse they think that you're inappropriate um, nonverbal delivery is very important um, make sure that when you practice the speech you're 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 showing your audience that you're invested in your topic you're animated um, you're drawing them in by you showing them that you you care about the event that you've been you've been called to speak at so like I said this may be something you're asked to do more than you are other speeches you may be asked to do a toast at um, a wedding um, I, I know a lot of people that, that do not love public speaking, but they're, they've been asked to speak at funerals quite a bit, and that would be a comparable type of speech. Um, so always think about the reason why you're being asked to speak, how long are the expectations that you speak, what is the overall theme or topic or climate for the occasion, and make sure that you adhere to things that are appropriate for the setting that you've been called to speak in.